I'm Max Tegmark, a physics professor at MIT. Now, are you a life form? I am indeed a life form. You sure? I'm a self-aware life form. <laughs> That's pretty much the most basic thing I know. Okay, and uh, are we alone in the universe? <clears throat> My guess is that we are alone in our universe. By that I mean that I think we're alone in this, the spherical region of space from which light has had time to reach us during the 13.8 billion years since our Big Bang. I'm not saying we're alone, alone in all of space, but we're alone in the part of space that we have any ability to ever see or visit. Now, on the other hand, you're sitting next to a tree, right there, there's a tree over here, and you consider yourself alone because that tree is not self-aware, is that what you're assuming? No, I mean, I think we humans are the only life forms in our universe that has gone to the point of inventing telescopes. How many times further away than that observable universe is the nearest Max Tegmark? Oh, that's way, way farther. How, far? in How fact, much farther? In fact, if you go a Google, about a Googleplex meters away, you get an identical copy of our whole universe, complete with human civilization in it. And that's about one where the Google zero is, where Google is one with 100 zeros. But you don't have to go that far to find life, I think. You just have to go way more than 10 to the power 26 meters, which is how far we are to the edge. And that already means, for all intents and purposes, it's up to us humans whether life will one day flourish throughout our cosmos or whether it'll stay on this planet or even go extinct. Well, wait a minute. How, let's, let's ask that question again. How close is the nearest Max Tegmark to you, this Max Tegmark? Oh, <clears throat> now exactly does... identical Max Tegmarks are pretty rare. So you have to go um, over over ten to the twenty, um, over ten to the ten to the twenty meters away, which is ridiculously far. But I'm not saying that I think the nearest life that can build telescopes and spaceships is that far. I'm just saying I think it's probably farther away than the part of space we can reach, which means that the, whether life, whether our cosmos is going to come alive one day and be teeming with, with, with advanced civilizations is probably going to depend on what we do on Earth. You saw the movie Contact with Jodie Foster. I did. At the end, there's a child who says, are we alone? And she says, well, if we are, it would be an awful waste of space. Now, when I heard that, I felt, oh, that sounds kind of interesting and funny. And then I thought, I thought of Australia, about when Captain Cook came and says, hey, Terra Nullis, there's nobody here. Of course, there except were people. There were people. Yeah, except there were. So, so I'm wondering, you know, what, what do we mean by... Anyway, what do you think of that? Do you think, do you agree that it's an awful waste of space if uh, we are alone? Well, there, it used to be a time when there was nobody in our entire observable universe with telescopes when there was just a bunch of hot plasma expanding in all directions, right? Gradually, life appeared here, and we invented telescopes, and now there is an awareness, and the universe is aware of itself in the sense that there is life that knows that there are galaxies. Uh, I think if we, went, if we invented more powerful technology and used it to just go extinct, then, and our universe because of that turned out to never really come alive, right? That then it would be a huge waste of, sp waste of space. Right now I think there's this enormous potential for life to, for the spread and for this civilization we have here to just be the beginning of something even more awesome. So based on the, the measurement of flatness of the universe, we say that the entire universe is about 60 times larger than the, the observable universe, or is that the number that we should quote? Well, yeah, if space is not curved at all, then it will go on forever, mm -hmm. if, if it doesn't connect back on itself as a donut at least. And um, from the kind of measurements we have, of, from the microwave background, baby pictures of a universe that you, Charlie, worked on for your mm -hmm. PhD thesis, mm -hmm. uh, we can measure that, yeah, in that case, space, our space is a lot bigger than the part of space we can see. But how much bigger? That's what my question. Probably at least sixty times bigger in radius. Sixty, so, at least so sixty many, times many bigger. thousand times bigger in volume. It may well be infinitely bigger. In fact, yeah. if inflation theory is, is but correct, how, what's the smallest it can be? It's probably about sixty times sixty its radius, times. or sixty cubed times so more about, volume. About so about the size of this house compared to that ball, then. Yeah, so over two hundred thousand times more volume. So over two hundred thousand mm -hmm. more times more galaxies than, oh. than we can ever see. So did you just mold, did you just 
do 60 cubed in your head? Or did yes. you thought about that before? 